All right, so let's move on to this next example. Uh, this is actually example two from page 82 in the textbook. Uh, we're going to look at the domain and the range of the functions here uh, and compare them. So the best way that I find for this one, we could use, if you look in your textbook, you could use technology, you could use your graphing calculator, you could input these things and, uh, and get some information out of that. But it's important, I think, to, to have an understanding of, of what these graphs look like and to be able to sketch them out. So that's what we're going to do for A and B. We'll sketch out the graphs of both of these functions, and then we'll look at the domain and range of this. So let me just pause this, and uh, I'll set up the axes. You can probably do the same thing. Set up some x and y axes in your books so that you can graph both of these, uh, these quadratic functions, these parabolas. You should know how to do that already. Don't bother with the square root function yet. We'll do that together in a moment. Close. So in A here, we've got y is equal to 2 minus 0.5x squared, or if you prefer, I think about this as y is equal to negative 0.5x squared plus 2. That helps me to identify it as a quadratic that's been vertically expanded by a factor of 1 half, compressed actually, reflected in the x-axis, and then moved up 2. So that means if I make this 2 and 4, and uh, let's make these ones the same kind of spread. 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4, etc. Negative 2. Uh, that this is a parabola that starts here, goes over 1, down half as far, probably here, over 2, down half as far as it normally would, which is 2 instead of 4, over 3 and down 4 and a half, and over 4 and down half of 16. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Mirrors over on the other side. And I get this parabola. There we go. It goes through those points, obviously. Okay, and x squared plus 5 over on this other graph. If I do the same kind of distance here, this is 2, 4, 6, 8. plus 5 is going to be here, and it's a regular parabola. So over 1, up 1, over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 3, up 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. If I mirror that on the other side, we get this parabola. Now remember that my axes, each line is worth 2. We get those two graphs. All right, now to graph the square root function, all I need to do is figure out what the square root of the y coordinate is. So in this case, if this is negative 4 comma, what's that, negative 6, the y coordinate is negative 6. And when I take the square root of that, it doesn't exist. I can't take the square root of negative 6. So none of this actually matters, this lower part, uh, for my square root function. I'm not going to start graphing it until I get to here. The y-coordinate is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. Here, right at that point, the y-coordinate is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of, what's this? The square root of 2 is 1.4, so slightly less than 1 and a half. The square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 0 is 0. Now you'll remember, between 0 and 1, the square root function lies above f of x. So I get this kind of shape, comes back through, through here, crosses, curls, and comes back down to 0. Okay, it's important to remember what happens between 0 and 1. Same thing happens here. Different looking graph, but the same structure. I take the square root of any y coordinate. So if this is the square root, if this is 5, y equals 5, then the square root of that is something bigger than 2. You can figure out what that is on your calculator, but it's about here, let's say. This is a, uh, a y coordinate of 9, so the square root of 9 is going to be 3, right here and right here. And let's just pump this up 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is here. The square root of that directly below it is going to be 4, which is about there, and about here. 
So I get this graph that's going to come out like that and go one. And if I had my my um, quadratic, the blue graph, extend higher, I'd be able to get more points on my square root function. So we've got the two graphs. Now let's look at the domain and the range. So the domain of the square root function and the range of the square root function. And we'll look at the domain of the original quadratic and the range of the original quadratic. So the original, the blue one here, has a domain of all the x's. I'm just going to do this a little shorter for time. Um, all x's are elements of the set of real numbers, all real values of x. Okay, All the x's are possible. But my range is all the y values that are less than or equal to 2. Right? Because it's a parabola is extending downwards. So I'm looking at y values that are less than 2. For the red function, my square root function, you can see over here that it extends from negative 2 to 2. So my domain is going to be all the values of x that are greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to 2. It's a subset of this. The domain of the square root function is a subset of the domain of the uh, quadratic function. The range is going to be all the y values that are greater than or equal to 0, because there are no negative values. It's only up from 0, and less than or equal to the square root of 2. And square root of 2, about 1.41. Okay, It's probably also, uh, uh, fine as well to write y is less than or equal to the square root of 2 and greater than or equal to 0. Okay, So either one of these would be acceptable for me. Now, the domain and range of my second graph, we've got all regular x values again, or all real values of x. x belongs to the set of real numbers. And for the range, we've got all the y values that are greater than or equal to 5. For my uh, square root function, hopefully you can predict what's going to happen here. Pause it, think it, and then come back and check it yourself. We've got x as an element of the set of real numbers, so all real values of x. And the range is going to be all the y values that are greater than or equal to the square root of 5. Now what I'd like you to do is to do the same thing here. Sketch the quadratic. This one's, it's still a parabola. Okay, it's pointing up, but it's been moved down one. So it's going to be a parabola, for instance, that looks roughly like that. Sketch it out neatly. And then do the square root of that. The shape is going to be different. Just like these two were different, this round graph over here, or this red graph over here in A, and this red graph in B, they're both the square roots of parabolas, but they look different, quite different. When you graph this one, it's also going to look different. Okay, So graph it, check that with your neighbors, see what you come up with, write down what the domain and the range are. And we'll check that together in class the next day. What we're going to do right now is graph the square root given a graph. This part's easy. Well, I found it easy and uh, quite quick. So all you need to do, and I hope you, you know this already. In fact, why don't you pause the video and just think about what is it that you're going to do to graph this function, to graph the square root of each of these functions. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that. I hope you've paused this and thought it through. So the first thing is just remember that anything that's below isn't going to be part of the square root function. So anything that's below isn't going to be part of it. We start at 0 as an invariant point. So I can do that with both of these graphs. Both of these pieces here are going to be part of my square root function. 1's, y values of 1's, are also invariant points. So they're both important things to graph to start with. Remember that between 0 and 1, the square root function lies above the original. So this would be something like that, 
and like that. And then I just find the, the square root of convenient y values, like 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So that gives me a nice point to draw my graph through. Here, my 4 is about here, so directly below that at 2, and directly below this one at 2. And I've got 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's say that 9's about here. So directly below that, at 3, I have another point. So my graph comes in at something like this. There you go. This red part down below doesn't count. It's not part of it. Right? So we're just looking at the this portion here and this portion there. And for the other graph for A, oops, right through here. Now I want you to ask yourself, what would this look like? y equals the square root of negative x squared minus 1. So first off, you need to think, what does that look like? So it's a parabola, it's reflected down, and it's moved down 1. That should go through that dot there. There we go. Okay. Now, if I take the square root of this, all of these y-coordinates down here are negative. So when you take the square root, what do you get? This is not possible. It doesn't exist. x squared is always going to be positive. If I make it negative, that's a negative number. And if I make it, if I subtract 1 from that, that's even going to be more negative. So it's impossible to take the square root of what's guaranteed to be a negative number. It's not possible. So there isn't always a square root function. OK, well, that wraps it up for this chapter. I know that uh, Mr. Z has been spending some time with you showing you these videos. Uh, feel free to back it up and see pieces that you need to. Review it at home. OK, go through the key ideas. Make notes for yourself, additional notes in your, in your own notes. And then, uh, when you're at home, and here's the assignment that I want you to work on. Okay, page 86, as you see it here, 2, 3, 5 AC, 6 AC, 8, 9, 12, 16, and 17 AC. I'll be back, uh, I'll like to be back a little bit uh, later today. So we can talk at lunch or after school. After school would be better. And um, uh, I'll be back to teach on Wednesday morning. Okay, take care. Have a great day.